In the deep west of Labette, Kansas, sat a bed and breakfast adjacent to the Great Osage Trail in 1871. It was the only open road to travel further west. As people had to travel for many miles on horses or caravans, they would often stop by the Bender Inn for a night's rest. However, many rich travelers would be unaware that they would never leave. Alive, at least. The Bender Inn became the final stop for many travelers who were killed in cold blood by the family and robbed of their possessions. The fact that the inn was situated near the Osage Trail in a remote, sparsely populated area did attract many travelers who wanted a piece of bread to eat and water to quench their thirst. Who was this serial killer family? They were the Benders, better known as the Bloody Benders, and they were ruthless. The Benders' story begins like many other from this time period after the Homestead Act of 1862. After the Civil War, the Osage Indians were moved from their home in Labette County to Oklahoma in order to make the Kansas Territory available to European settlers. In October of 1870, five families moved to this area of Osage, settling around seven miles from where the city of Cherryville would be established. One of the families was the Benders, who moved into a 160-acre property facing the Osage Trail. The man, John Bender, Sr. and Jr., were first to arrive. About to be German immigrants, the elder Bender was around the age of 60 and spoke little English with a thick accent. While the younger Bender was around 25, he spoke English well but with an accent. After the men had prepared the land with a cabin and a barn, the women arrived in 1871. Elvira Bender, who went by Ma, she was around 55 and spoke a little English, and she was so unfriendly that the neighbors dubbed her She-Devil. The star of the family was Kate, an attractive 23-year-old who spoke English fluently and worked as a self-proclaimed healer and psychic who held seances claimed to cure illnesses, and gave lectures on spiritualism. Though occultism wasn't necessarily unusual at the time, Kate's advocacy of free love earned her particular notoriety and drew fans to the Binner property. There, the family had used canvas to split the one-room cabin into two parts. The back was kept as a living quarters while the front was converted into a general store, kitchen, and a dining room table where travelers would come and stop for dry goods and a meal, or even a night of rest. But Bender Inn wasn't the safe haven it pretended to be, and would soon become the focus of a deep investigation into a series of mysterious disappearances and deaths in the region. Here's where it gets dark. In May of 1871, when a man was found in Drum Creek, southeast of the Bender property, with his skull crushed and his throat slashed. In February of 1872, two more men were found dead in the same manner. By the fall of that... Huh? Here's where it gets dark. In May 1871, when a man was found in Drum Creek, southeast of the Bender property, with his skull crushed and his throat slashed, in February of 1872, two more men were found dead in the same manner. By the fall of the year, travelers had started to disappear off the Osage Trail. Reports of the murdered and missing soon spread through the region, and travelers began avoiding the route. Meanwhile, vigilante groups tried with little success to hold someone accountable, often arresting and then releasing innocent men. But it was the disappearance of George Newton Longcore that set in motion the series of events that would eventually expose the truth about these mysterious disappearances and deaths. After the death of his wife, Longcore and his 18-month-old daughter, Marianne, had left Independence, Kansas, for Iowa, but they never made it. Soon, Dr. William Henry York, Longcore's former neighbor, who'd sold Longcore horses and a wagon for the trip, 
was alerted that the team had been found abandoned near Fort Scott, Kansas. As such, Dr. William Henry York set out looking for the Longhorn Marianne in spring of 1873. He questioned homesteaders along the trail as he made his way to Fort Scott, where he identified the wagon and horses as those he'd sold to Longhorn and clothes found as belonging to the father and daughter. But on his way back to Independence, Dr. York made a fatal decision. Stopping at the Bender Inn, Dr. York never returned. This was the worst step that the Benders had made. What the Benders didn't realize was that their latest victim came from a prominent family. Dr. York's two brothers were Colonel Ed York and Alexander M. York, a member of the Kansas State Senate. Colonel York quickly organized a search party of 75 men who searched the area for Dr. York, and in March 1873 tracked him to the Bender Inn. In this initial meeting, the Benders denied any knowledge of Dr. York and suggested that the traveler may have met with a foul play at a remote location near Drum Creek where John Jr. claimed to have been shot around the same time as Dr. York disappeared. Without any proof they were involved in his brother's disappearance, Colonel York had no choice but to leave the Bender Inn. Yet Colonel York soon found more evidence against the Benders and returned on April 3rd with armed men. Colonel York confronted them about a woman who claimed to have fled the Bender Inn after Elvira threatened her with knives and pistols. Though Elvira initially pretended not to even understand the English, she began yelling about how the woman had cursed for coffee. When Colonel York repeated the accusation, Elvira then kicked the men out. But it was too late. Elvira had already revealed both her mastery of the English language as well as her true nature. Hoping to defuse the situation, Kate offered to use her psychic abilities to assist Colonel York in his search for his brother. She told him that if he returned that Friday night with fewer men, she would show him to Dr. York's grave. A few days later, a local noticed that animals on the Benner property were dead or starving. Upon investigating, elected township officer Leroy Dick found that the property had been abandoned and that there was a bad odor coming from a trap door nailed shut and underneath a bed. His subsequent call for a search party turned up hundreds of locals wielding shovels and pick saxes and ready to search the Bender Inn. What they found was a scene of such gore that not even Stephen King would write about it. Underneath the trap door was an empty room, where they found the smell of coming from clotted blood had soaked through the stone floor into the soil below. Not finding any bodies, the search made its way to Elvira and Kate's vegetable garden and apple orchard, where they would find Dr. York buried in a shallow grave. By the next day, at least ten bodies had been recovered from a garden and well, along with additional dismembered body parts. All killed in the same manner, the victims were hit in the head, likely by a hammer, before having their throats slit was evident on all the bodies except for Marianne, who was likely buried alive. Many of the bodies had also been mutilated, possibly suggesting genital trauma. Though some victims were wearing valuables or carrying cash, a lack of targeting suggests that vendors were killed for thrill, not for the money. Around a dozen bullet holes were found in the cabin, likely from the victims who tried to fight back. One of the few items found in the cabin was a Bible with notes in German, which identified John Jr. as actually John Gebhardt. This, as well as reports from neighbors, suggests that John Jr. and Kate may have actually been a couple instead of brother and sister. In fact, it is now believed that none of the four were actually named Bender, and that only the mother and daughter were related. Elvira is thought to have been born 
Elmira Mark in the Adirondack Mountains, and to have multiple children and husbands, some say who died of head injuries before she took up the Bender alias. John Sr. was likely born John Flickinger before emigrating from either Germany or the Netherlands, and Kate Bender as Elvira's fifth child, Eliza Griffith. In the wake of the gruesome discoveries made on the Bender property, both State Senator Alexander York and Kansas Governor Thomas A. Osborne offered substantial rewards for the apprehension of the family. Detectives followed wagon tracks to find the family's horses, who had been abandoned outside of Thayer, just 12 miles north of the inn. From there, it's hard to tell what is real and what is urban legend. There are so many different stories of where the Benders ended up. As the story of the Bender spread across the country in the years following the murder spree, thousands of tourists and souvenir hunters flocked to the Bender's former homestead, looting the property down to the bricks and the cellar lining walls. Hammers allegedly from the home have been displayed at Cherryvale Museum, while a stained knife thought to have been taken from the Bender Inn now belongs to the Kansas Historical Society. And to this day in Kansas, a traveling mother and daughter might be teased about me and Ma and Kate Bender, like the legend itself, immortal in their infamy. While the fate of the Bender family may truly never be known, the Bloody Benders live on in legend, a real-life horror story forever engraved into the collective memory of the Kansas Plains and beyond. What do you think happened to the Bloody Benders?